In this video, we're going to be discussing the cost assumption method known as FIFO, first in, first out. Before we do that, let's have a look at the base formula. This base formula is quite useful to help guide one in calculating inventory accounts. B stands for beginning balance. You'll find your beginning balance. Sometimes you're given numbers based on dates. Whatever the ending balance was for the last period becomes the beginning balance for the new period. So find your beginning balance. Add any purchases or costs that are associated with purchases for the inventory. Subtract the cost of the goods sold. This is when you're actually selling some of the merchandise. And after you do that, you're left with what's called the ending balance, which is your new ending balance for this period. So base, beginning balance, add purchases, subtract cost of the goods sold, and this will get you to your ending balance. Now let's have a look at FIFO. FIFO again stands for first in, first out. It is a cost assumption method. It's how we assume that the product is moving. Whether the product is physically moving like that or not doesn't matter. We need a way as accountants to be able to apply some cost to the goods that are being sold. So we're going to assume in this video for FIFO and we're also going to be assuming a perpetual inventory system which just means that it is constantly updated with barcodes as they are in the world now this is used frequently it is the um, it's the type of system we most often see so perpetual inventory system is constantly updated purchases coming in and goods selling leaving the warehouse we're constantly updating so that's what we want to do as well you'll see some data over on the left hand side of the screen so let's just start applying that first we have some beginning inventory this beginning inventory um, 20 units at $16 and so I've carried that across the top line you see here so this is our ending inventory the the beginning inventory is what we have in inventory at the moment then on January the 8th a sale of 15 units occurs so I'm going over to the center three columns now 15 items and so we have to decide what cost to apply to those items well we only have the one layer of cost $16 each so no problem there we'll multiply 15 items times $16 and get a total cost of 240 the items sold 15 items so that means five items are left in this inventory so again we just have the one cost to deal with so that's the sixteen dollars per unit so let me let Excel do this math for me I'm just telling it to multiply these numbers together so we have a total cost now at this point of eighty dollars again they're just multiplied across now let's go to back to the left hand side of the screen clean that up so it's not too cluttered for you we have a purchase on February 22nd 30 units at $18. So in the first three columns, this deals with our purchases. Quantity 30, unit cost $18, and Excel again calculated this for me. Multiply the two together, you get 540. So now, what do we have left in the inventory? Well, these 30 items are in the inventory. So let me take those over. So now my ending inventory is actually made up of both of these two columns and depending on uh, you know how frequently a company is buying and selling there could be several layers of costs in here we're just going to be showing two so I have a total of 35 units 30 that have a cost of $18 each five have a cost of $16 each next we have a sale on February the 28th let me just kind of get these to green also so we'll know we've already uh, recorded those so we won't have to record the next ones and this purchase as well just make it a little easier okay so February 28th we have a sale of 25 units so let me go over here to 25 in the middle so now my question is how do I want to apply cost to these units well in this case remember we're looking at first in 
are considered to be the first out. So that means five of those items are going to come from that old layer of $16. Let's just go ahead and get that multiplied across. So now that layer is completely gone. But I, I'm still selling goods. So a total again of 25 were sold here on February 28th. So I need to get 20 more units. So my next 20 units will come from that layer that was purchased for $18 each. So let's put that math in place as well. Multiply 20 times the $18 each. So we have 80 plus 360. So the total cost for this particular sale was the combined total of 80 plus 360, which would be 440. That's just for the one sale on February 28th. So now, what do I have left? Well, remember, we, we already uh, removed these five units, the oldest units. So all I had left were the 30 units. Of that now, 20 have been sold. So I have 10 units left at the, at the $18 each. So $180 is my current ending balance of inventory. So let me take the highlight off of that one just to remind us that that one is gone. So this is my current inventory. March 21st, another sale of five units. So skipping over purchases, let's go to the five units. The question is what kind of cost to apply? Well now I'm down to just one layer of cost and they are at $18 each so I can actually just take that straight across as well. Next question, okay what's left in inventory? I had 10 units here I sold five of them so there are five left and they're valued at $18 each as well we just sold half of what we had at that point so we need to get more units and that's what we have on March 15 a purchase of 50 units at $19 each. So in the first three columns past the date, you see 50 units, $19 each, a total of 950. Well, these items are actually going over to ending inventory as well. So what do I have left in ending inventory now? Let me stay with gold. I have a total of 55 units. I had five left over with the layer at $18 each, and now I have 50 at $19 each. Okay, let's get this updated. So now on March 31st, we sell 15 units. So skipping over the purchases, we have a total of 15 units to sell. We're using FIFO. That means the oldest layer is being removed first. Our oldest layer consisted of five items at $18 each. So we're going to take all of those for cost assumption purposes. And then we still need 10 more units. Remember, we sold a total of 15. So 10 come from this oldest unit, this oldest um, layer. And so the next 10 are going to come from the 19 because the others are gone. Last item to consider is the sale on March 31st. 15 items. So five of those items will come from the oldest layer which was five items at $18. So we're going to take all of those items. So this whole layer is going to be gone now. And then we have 10 more items to pull, so or to cost. So we're going to assume that that cost is related to the 50 because that's the last layer that we have left. So we had 50 items at $19 each. 10 of those are going to be taken from that layer. So now the cost for that particular sale of 15 items, we would add these two together, $90 plus the $190, so that's about $280. So now what's left? Well, we had 50 items at $19. We removed 10 of those. So now we have 40 items left, and they are valued at $19 each. So a total of $760.
So let me get my highlighting caught up. So this is the ending inventory now. And let me get, I'm just going to put this in green so that we know all of the transactions have been taken care of as well. So let's look at this a moment. The question at the bottom of the screen asks us to identify the cost of the goods sold. That is the cost of the merchandise that has been sold. Well, that total cost is 1050 You see it in the blue. Also notice the quantity, 60 units have been sold, if you needed that information. The cost per unit, to add this up, would have no bearing, um, no good informational um, contact on the overall total, so we won't do that. And then the next question to answer is, what is the ending inventory balance? So we don't need to uh, really add anything here. We'll just bring forward that last item because $760 is the value on the ending inventory. There are 40 items. And this one, because there's just one layer, I'll go ahead and bring that across as well. But you would be interested in what those numbers are. Now let's use the base formula and see how you could go back and reconcile these numbers to make sure that everything matches up. Okay, I've got some of the items already together. I have the base formula to track the dollar value and then also the physical units, the number count. So the first items you see across are your beginning balance. There were 20 items at a total cost of $320, so that's our starting point. Then we want to add purchases. So remember over, if you look in the table to the left, the total purchases, 80 units, Total cost, $14.90, so I've added in 80 units, add to the 20, a total of 100 units that need to be accounted for, add together beginning balance, purchases, total $1,810. So again, we need to account for the number of physical units and the dollar value. So then if you go to your cost of the goods sold, remember, 60 items were sold, so I'm just going to put minus 60. Dollar value, go over again to the table. The cost of the goods sold was 1050 And so now you'll see that our numbers do match up like they're supposed to. The total number still left in inventory, physical units are 40 and that's what we have. And the dollar value, $760. And that matches up to what we have in the table as well. Be sure to go out and review another video related to LIFO. LIFO is last in or considered to be the first out. LIFO versus FIFO. And you can see that sometimes, because we're using small numbers and small quantities, the numbers won't vary much, but they could make a significant difference.